Hello students, Namaskar. Hope you all are staying at home. You are you all are safe and uh, in good health. I'm Mrs. Kavita Upadhyay, your English teacher. I teach English at Sri Maheshwar Girl Center College, Aligarh. Today I'm going to teach you English Prose Chapter 2, A Fellow Traveler. This is the part 1 of the lesson. Part 2 will be continued in the next video. This lesson is written by Mr. A.G. Gardiner. Now, who is A.G. Gardiner? A.G. Gardiner, his full name is Alfred George Gardiner. He was a distinguished journalist. He edited the Daily News. He also was a renowned essayist who wrote under the pen name Alpha of the Blue. Now, let me talk to you about this lesson. This lesson's title is A Fellow Traveller. You know, when you travel in train or buses, you have some travelers traveling along with you. You start chatting with them, talking with them. Sometimes the journey becomes quite amusing and unforgettable because of the fellow traveler you are traveling with. This is the experience of a traveler with a special fellow traveler. The traveler is Mr. A.G. Gardiner and the fellow traveler. You will come to know when we read the chapter. So, let us come to the lesson. And how that fellow traveller makes his journey unforgettable. Let us see that. The lesson begins now. I do not know which of us got into the carriage first. The author says, he says that he did not know whether he or the fellow traveller. He was talking about got into the carriage first. Indeed, I did not know. He was in the carriage at all for some time. For some time he was unaware of his presence in the carriage. It was the last train from London to a midland, midland town. It was the last train which left London and was to reach a midland town. A stopping train. Stopping train means it stopped at all the way stations. An infinitely leisurely train. Infinitely means extremely. Leisurely means slowly moving, moving very slowly as if it had all the time in the world, train, one of, one of those trains which gave you an understanding of eternity. Eternity means endless. It will continue forever and forever. When you sit in, this, in such a train which is moving so slowly, it's, it starts seeming. Um, it seems that the journey would not come to an end now. It was tolerably full when it started. You could tolerate the number of passengers sitting in the train. It was not completely full, somewhat empty when it started. But as we stopped at the suburban stations, the travelers alighted. Alighted means got down in ones and twos. Ones and twos means in Hindi we say ikka dukka. They alighted at some station. One of them alighted at some two. And by the time we had left the outer ring of the London. Outer ring means? The outer periphery of London, outer boundaries of London. When we left that, um, when we left uh, London behind, I was alone. I was left alone in the carriage or rather, or rather he says, I was thinking that, um, but I might not have been right in thinking so, that I was alone. Now, when he was thinking that he was alone in the carriage, he, he says, what freedom you enjoy when you are traveling alone in a compartment. How do you feel? This, there is a pleasant sense of freedom about being alone in a carriage. Pleasant means something agreeable, which you like. Sense of freedom about being alone in the carriage. When you are left alone in a carriage, that is jolting noisily making a, lo a loud noise and is going at a good pace through the night and you are alone in the carriage uh, this feeling of being alone you like because there is a sense of freedom about it you are free to do anything it is liberty liberty means freedom and unrestraint unrestraint means free from all controls you are not controlled by anyone um, in a very agreeable form agreeable means pleasant which you like you can do anything you like. He says you can do anything you like. And that this situation when you can do anything, children like it very much. And even the adults and grown-ups, they like being free. You can talk to yourself as loud as you please. 
now he mentions things which you can do when you are alone in a carriage and you don't fear that somebody somebody would watch you and say what this person is doing you can have um, you can talk to yourself as loud as you please and no one will hear you no one will hear what you are saying you can talk you are talking to yourself others will not hear you can have that argument out with jones jones is an imaginary person he names just anyone you can have an argument you want to fight with someone but you are not quarreling or fighting you can quarrel with that person now and roll him triumphantly in the in the dust without fear of a counter stroke counter stroke means um, being struck in retaliation now you can roll him in the dust in in your imagination you can imagine and roll him in dust and you don't need to fear that he will strike back counter stroke means striking back you can stand on your head and no one will see you you can stand on your head if you please and nobody is going to see you that you are doing it you can sing or dance a two step <clears throat> dance a two step means dance one or two steps you can sing or practice a golf stroke there is a large compartment empty for you empty for you and you can just practice a golf stroke you have to strike the ball straight or play marbles and even marbles can be played there kanche on the floor on the floor of the compartment without let or hindrance without let or hindrance means <clears throat> without any uh, hindrance uh, badha interruption nobody is going to interrupt you nobody is going to object let or hindrance means objection or interruption you can you can open the window or shut it without provoking a protest sometimes when you are traveling and there are fellow travelers with you uh, you shut the window they say don't no no don't shut it please leave it open if you shut the window they say please open it you have to take care of others also when you are traveling with them what they say they may be provoked they may protest they may be aroused hmm so you you are not going to arouse anyone if you shut the window or close it you can open both the windows or shut both sometimes the argument with the fellow traveler is about open one and shut one but now you are free to open both or open and shut both indeed you can go on opening them and shutting them as a sort of festival of freedom indeed vastav mein you can do one thing more that you can just celebrate your freedom by opening and shutting them go on doing that you can have any corner you choose you can choose any seat any corner wherever you want to sit try all of them in turn don't sit at one place try all the corners in turn you can lie at full length on the cushions and enjoy the luxury of breaking the regulations and possibly the heart of dora herself d o r a d o r a dora is defense of real mat it was a very strict law of england which no one dared to break but here the doc- here the author is saying you can lie full length at the cushions and enjoy the luxury this was a luxury if you broke dora and could escape otherwise you would be caught and punished so you don't need to fear you break dora here because you are alone and no one will see you breaking it you will never be caught you can possibly break the heart of dora he says heart of dora actually he is using d o r a dora as a pun pun means it has two meanings one is the name of a girl and the other is a law you can break this law you can break break the heart of dora you can do something which dora does not like and dora will not come to know that you have broke that her heart is broken you can escape even dora you can escape defense of real mat and you can not let dora know that you have broken her heart you can you have done something which she does not like on this night i did not know, do any of these things now the author say has listed so many things that can be done when you are alone in the compartment but then he says i did not do any of these things when i was alone in the compartment they did not happen to occur to me they did not happen to occur to me means uh, i did not think of them i did not chance to think of them they did not come to my mind at that time that i can do these things 
what i did was much more ordinary i did very simple thing when the last of my fellow passengers had gone i put down my paper stretched my arms and legs and stood up and looked out of the window on the calm summer night through which i was journeying <clears throat> when the last of my fellow passengers had gone when i was alone in the compartment the last fellow passenger which i uh, whom i could see had alighted and i was alone then <clears throat> i put down my paper i was reading a paper i put it down stretched my arms and legs stretched my arms and legs means angadayali stood up and looked out of the window on the calm summer night through which i was journeying i <clears throat> looked at the calm summer night calm means peaceful summer night it was summer night and i was journeying through this noting the pale reminiscence of the day pale reminiscence of the day means faint light remaining after sunset the sun had set but there was still some faint light which could be seen and it was the reminiscence of the day it was something that reminded that day has just passed <clears throat> that still lingered in the northern sky and this light could be seen in the northern sky of london i crossed the carriage and looked out of the other window i crossed the carriage came to the other side and looked out of the other window now i lit a cigarette sat down and began to read again he he then took his paper again and began to read it it was then that i became aware of my fellow traveler it was then when when i started reading my paper at that time keep it in mind when did he come aware, become aware of his fellow traveler when he started reading his paper he came and sat on my nose this was the time when he realized that he was not alone in the carriage someone was sitting on his nose sitting on the nose of the author who can be sitting on the nose what kind of fellow traveler sits on your nose just guess let us see he was one of those wingy nippy intrepid insects that we call vaguely mosquitoes now our author introduces him his fellow traveler to you he was one of those wingy wingy means having wings nippy nippy means nimble quick to move swift moving swiftly moving intrepid intrepid means courageous he is very courageous and bold sits on the nose of someone insect he is an insect a wingy nippy nippy means swift intrepid means courageous or bold insect that we call vaguely roughly we name this means this insect mosquito i flicked him off my nose flick means uh, with a light touch i flicked him off my nose and he made a tour of the compartment investigated its three dimension dimensions visited each window fluttered round the light decided that there was nothing so interesting as that large animal in the corner came and had a look at my neck i flicked him off my nose and he made a tour of the compartment he made a tour of the compartment means he went round the compartment investigated its three dimensions and he inspected all the dimensions means length width and height of the compartment visited each window he went to each window fluttered round the light fluttered means fly lightly with wings uh, making some sort of uh, flapping noise Uh, fluttered round the light decided that there was nothing so interested interesting he decided then he found nothing interesting in the in this compartment other than this large animal sitting in the corner this large animal who was sitting in the corner is author himself came and had he came to the author and had a look at the neck i flicked him off again flicked him off means again lightly touched the uh, insect to uh, um, to just um, get rid of it go uh, get away get him away he skipped away and he skipped away means lightly jumped away took another jaunt round the compartment jaunt means having a trip for pleasure for pleasure he went round the compartment again returned and seated himself impudently on the back of my hen and very rudely he came back and rudely sat himself on the back of my hand 
it is enough i said now the author he says this is the third time that you have committed this mistake and it is enough now i said magnanimity has its limits magnanimity means kindness or generosity forgiveness i have forgiven you three times you came sat on my nose you came and had a look at my neck now you are coming and sitting on my on the back of my hand this is the third time and my kindness has a limit twice you have been warned i have warned you twice by flicking you off not killing you and i am someone that i am someone in particular i am someone special that my august person resents august means respectable person means body my body is respectable resents means does not like hates the tickling impertinence of the strangers tickling impertinence means uh, touching lightly to cause laughter or uneasiness you are touching me lightly and this kind of rudeness boldness of the strangers i don't like i am a respectable person i don't like this i assume black the black cap assuming the black cap this is used this uh, um, phrase is used this expression is used metaphorically because um in britain is what in britain it, it was a custom whenever judges pronounced death sentence they used to put a square cloth black cloth on their head this was called assuming the black cap so i am going to pronounce the death sentence upon you i am assuming the assume means put on i condemn you to death condemn you to death means i pronounce death sentence mrityu dand deta hu main tumhe justice demands it justice demands it this is the demand of justice if i if i if i want to do justice i have to sentence you to death and the court awards it and the court who is the court here the author himself he says i am the judge i am assuming the black cap and i am awarding the death sentence for you the counts against you are many counts means charges against you are many there are so many charges against you you are a vagrant vagrant means vagabond you are unsettled you you are not not, not settled at at one place uh, with no home or visible means of livelihood you are a public nuisance public nuisance means Uh, you might be harmful to the public he is harming the public the, this mosquito is harming the public because it is biting them you are traveling without a ticket now another charge is you are traveling without ticket you have no meat coupon meat coupon is coupon for ration something like uh, you have ration cards they have meat coupons uh, by, by which they buy meat you can you don't have permission permit to get meat but you are having meat wherever you like you bite someone here or there and you get meat without a coupon for these and many other misdemeanors you are about to die the author says that for these misdemeanors means these charges and many other offenses that you have misdemeanors means light offenses that you have committed you are about to die you are given um the sentence of death I struck a swift lethal blow with my right hand. Swift means very quick, lethal means fatal. Very dangerous which might cause someone to die. It was a lethal blow which I gave with my right hand. He dodged the attack with an insolent ease. Insolent means insulting. He so easily dodged the attack dodged means saved himself from this attack that the author felt insulted. Mm, i i a man want to kill a mosquito and the mosquito saves itself dodges the attack this was insulting to me my personal vanity was aroused my personal vanity means, means my ego was aroused i was hurt i lunged at him with my hand my paper lunged means moved forward with sudden attack uh, suddenly to attack i moved forward suddenly to attack it with my hand my paper i jumped on the seat and pursued him round the lamp now it was fluttering round the lamp i pursued me chased the mosquito even round the lamp i adopted the tactics of feline cunning adopted means uh, tried using the tactics tacts uh, clever techniques of feline means the cat family cunning means cleverness 
the cats are very clever when they attack someone they just sit quietly and let that prey come in uh, come in their range then they swiftly attack it in the same way waiting till he had alighted i waited till the mosquito had got down and settled somewhere approaching with horrible stealthiness approaching the mosquito means coming near the mosquito with horrible stealthiness means very secretly without making a little sound striking with a sudden and terrible swift swiftness and then i struck it with a blow and terrible swiftness very quickly japatta marna ekdam se mosquito ke upar now he was adop- adopting these tactics here i am going to leave you with some questions which i think after reading this lesson up till now you can answer the first question is give a brief description of the train mr ag gardener was traveling by now this is not difficult because in the beginning only we discussed how he was traveling and how he said that this train was slow moving stopping at every station and then he also said that that this journey was going to give him the sense of eternity as if the journey is not to, not going to end and he also said that it was to, uh, this no no he was talking about carriage then so the carriage the train's carriage was tolerably full when he started the journey the second question is what according to ag gardener are the advantages of traveling alone in a railway compartment he says now you try to answer the questions i would advise you one thing you just uh, get a camera and click the picture of this screen so that you have all the questions with you and then you can write the answers practice writing writing the answers that is important because uh, enjoying the lesson is very good but you have to work hard keep that in mind second question is what according to ag gardener ag gardener is the name of the author are the advantages of traveling alone in a railway compartment he says that uh, there is a pleasant sense of freedom about being alone in the railway compartment then he lists things that you can do you you can do whatever you like you can stand on your head you can dance you can sing you can practice golf stroke you can lie full length on the cushion and you can open the window or shut it as you like it so many things that he lists that you have to mention here who was the author's fellow traveler you all know it was a mosquito when did the author become aware of its presence when the last of his fellow travelers had alighted he and he uh, he um, moved about uh, moved about the carriage then he came back and picked up his paper when he was reading the paper this mosquito came and sat on his nose it was then that he realized that he was not alone in the carriage there was a fellow traveler which was a mosquito so you can just write because it is a 30 word answer you can just write that uh, when the author was reading his paper and the mosquito came and sat on his nose it was then that he realized that uh, he was there in the compartment he was present in the compartment what did the author do when he was left alone in the railway compartment now he mentions so many things that you can do but he also says that i did not do any of these things they did not happen to occur to me then what did he do he just stretched stretched his arms and legs stood up went to the window looked at the pale reminiscence reminiscence of the day looked through the other uh, other side uh, the, the window at the other side then he came back lit his cigarette came back and started reading his paper again this is what he did now i have some fill in the blanks type questions for you this is from the text you have to fill in the appropriate um word in the blanks i do not know which of us got into the carriage and uh, got into the this is my weakness i sometimes uh, just <laughs> fill in the blank at the time of speaking only that dot that first i do not know which of us got into the dash first car no bus he was talking about train so it must be carriage second is i was alone or dad at dot 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 i thought i was alone probably perhaps rather or rather 
rather was the word which which he used that uh, more rightly it was more correct to say that i thought i was alone there is a sense of freedom about being alone in the railway compartment happy repulsive pleasant pleasant agreeable that which makes you happy that is the word you can open or shut the window without provoking a dash argument protest person without provo- provoking a protest protest means somebody opposing you if you, when you shut the window or open the window in the railway compartment the fellow traveler may come and protest protest means oppose i dash the black cap and condemn you to death wear put on or assume assume is the word which author uses this is a formal word assuming the black cap this is a phrase which is used so assume the black cap now thank you i'm leaving you with these questions and vocabulary exercises hope you have clicked the depth these pictures so that you can answer the questions and practice at home bye for now we will continue with the next lesson uh, sorry we will continue this lesson in the next video thank you so much enjoy the lesson enjoy your studies keep working hard and stay home stay safe namaskar